Hi, I'm Frank Howley and I love video games. More than that though, I love collecting video games. Everything on this shelf here are games I've beaten, played, enjoyed. There's more to the side. And even beyond that, I have a giant pile of video games, a huge backlog of things I haven't played yet, but hopefully plan on getting to eventually. And the problem is I love all video games from all eras. I like cheesy bad games. I like good ones, obviously. And as I try to get through all these video games, normally during non-story parts, I'll listen to something in the background. Things like podcasts, audiobooks, you know, interviews and Q and A's are most of the times I'll sit on Skype with friends and just talk about video games. And I'm deeply inspired by shows like Mark Maron's podcast and the Brett Easton Ellis podcast, which are these deeply analytical one-on-one -on -one conversations with, you know, people in the film industry, writers, entertainers, and like that. I talk about history, careers, but also, you know, art, mental health, all these, you know, this wide variety of topics. And there doesn't seem to be anything like that for video games. And so the idea behind Neighborhood Game Club is I'm going to go around Southern California, interviewing my friends, hosting conversations, talking about video games and whatever comes up. For the first episode, I went to my friend Matthew Bruce's place. He's a friend who's been in many of my YouTube videos. A lot of my comedy sketches, we do a band called The Vampires. We sat down, talked for an hour and had a good time. So this is new, it's experimental, but I figured instead of doing something like Let's Plays or anything boring like that, I'm gonna do something that interests me. It's the Neighborhood Game Club. Welcome, my name is Matt Bruce, this is my video game collection. I got PS4 games right here, pretty good side so far, half of these games are not even good games, so I don't even recommend Oh, dude, PS4. you got Watch Dogs? Yeah, Watch Dogs, I played an hour of Watch Dogs, it's, it's not good. We got Xbox One games. Damn, dude, it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, Xbox One, the definitive experience, Halo and Call of Duty. You have Sunset um, Overdrive, that's great. Sunset Overdrive, I like that game. It's, people give it shit for the humor, but... You know, games are fun. 3DS games. I want to get more 3DS games, but whenever I have money to buy a game, I tend to want like a PS4 or a PS3 game. This is a Rilokuma Japanese game. It's basically in Nintendo Dogs, but with Rilokuma, which is beautiful. So is that region free, or can you play it on your 3DS? I don't know. Have you never played it? <laughs> no, I just fucking oh, have it. Oh, I just called you out. You haven't even played it. I said it's no, like Nintendo Dogs. All right, all right, yeah. Well, you know, know. know. It, could be totally, it could be like Call of Duty. Cool. 64. Um, uh, my friend gave me all these games. Do you have Glover? Uh, no, I have Mario 64, banjo Tui, not even the first one. Shadows of the Empire. That's good. Cruising USA. That's great. Wave Race 64. That's hot. Oh, wait. What's that? Oh, big reveal. Glover? No, nope, Oh, right. no, Trash right. Bros. That, I'm gonna do a test every episode, I'm gonna see if people have Glover. So you okay. failed the Glover test. I did fail. My PS3 games are these two shelves. It's kind of like my main collection. Unlike most people, I had a PS3 and I did not own a 360 because I wanted Metal Gear. Um, so currently right now I'm going through to GameStops and like picking up games that are going out of print that are going to become rare maybe in the next 5-10 years. Split Second, Nier, uh, Yakuza 4, The Darkness 1, picked up Anarchy Reigns. A lot of these games I have not even played. Because I'm picking up for like a dollar, two dollars, and it's just, it feels weird. I just want them in my collection. So that, that's something I'll talk about, we'll, we'll talk about in detail, but you buy games and you haven't played them yet, and you stick them on your shelf. Do you have like a system of keeping track of what games you haven't beaten yet? I don't, because I keep them all in alphabetical order, so they're easy to find. One time I was like, I'm going to go through my games and just beat them, and I stacked them up on my desk of all the games I didn't beat. It was too much. Yeah, I, that's, like, I have the stacking system at home. And yeah, like, it. it's honestly, like, games, like, I'm focused on playing PS4 games right now. Like, next week is Metal Gear Solid 5. I'm going to play that. So I just don't really have time to go back and play all these PS3 games. But I think because when I was a kid, I did not have money to buy games. So now nah, it's kind of, like, obsessive. Like, I just want to go out and buy games even though I'm not going to play them. The one thing that bugs me with PS3's library is they've changed the format yeah. of their spines like four times. There's They're the Spider-Man logo, there's the Greatest Hits. Most recently printed P PlayStation games, they have them, uh, like there's a blue PS3 spine to mimic the PS4 one. Oh really? I have one game like that, it's uh, Dragon Guard 3. Yeah. They, yeah. So one, stacking the games even alphabetically, it's still like It still looks creative. weird, it looks just like, it kind of bounces around. Like I do love like how PS4 games look stacked because it's really clean and simple. Other games I have, I have Xbox games down here. Uh, oh, yeah, I have the classics like Kung Fu Chaos, 
I have classics like you have, de- you have a double pack of Dead or Alive. That's this cool. game sucks. What? No, what? Yeah, it does. It's fucking clunky right, as hell. Get out. What the hell is Voodoo uh, Vince? What is Voodoo Vince? Voodoo, Voodoo Vince. Vince. Voodoo Vince. <laughs> what it's is a, Voodoo Vince? It's a great 3D platformer. It's you play as a voodoo doll and you hurt yourself to cur- to kill is this enemies. It's rated M. What's it rate? It's rated teen for mild violence. You like stick pins in your butt and then the enemies get pins in their Can butt. Can I borrow this? Shit? No. It's really that's, good. That's that's inappropriate. Um also like Blink's the Time Sweeper, bring it all the hits. Who would win in a fight? Blink's the Time Sweeper or Voodoo Vince? I mean, here's the thing. Voodoo Vince can poke him in his butt, but he's also like this tall, so Blink's can just vacuum him up in his little vacuum cleaner. Um Blink's the Time Sweeper is one of my favorite games ever, so don't make fun. PS2 games, I don't, again, don't have that many. I have uh, Big Mother Truckers, but I have... Oh, it's not even in here. I don't... Oh, God, games God. are missing. You have the Mega Man Anniversary Collection. I do. This is all the... This is Mega Man 1 through Mega Man X2, I believe. Or Mega Man... And no, it goes up to Mega Man X, at least. What sucks about this game is that you can only play Mega Man 1 and X at the start, and you have to beat them to go on to the other games. And I suck ass at Mega Man. So I've only played like the first three levels of Mega Man, and that's all I've played of this. And they just re-released this for uh, PlayStation Four. Um, all the the, the uh, Legacy Collection, whatever for PS Two, it's all emulated, but for PS Four, it's completely rebuilt from the ground up. So it's supposed to be like perfect uh, remake. Yeah, of it. I mean honestly, it's like I did not grow up. I mean I grew up during the Xbox original era, so I I'm one of those people who doesn't have nostalgia for like platformers or like the SNES or NES. Not saying I don't like those games. But when they release Mega Man on PS4, I'm just not going to get it. Cause Instead, I just... you'll go back and play Voodoo Vince. Voodoo Vince? I love Voodoo Vince. What is your most prized item in your collection? Uh, definitely. I uh, got a autographed copy of Metal Gear Solid 2 by Hideo Kojima. I met him at Comic-Con. And I brought Metal Gear Solid 2 because 4 had just came out. And I didn't want to bring 4 to Comic-Con because I thought someone was going to steal it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can get that for $3 <laughs> at GameStop now. So. Yeah, I thought someone was, oh, it's, I thought someone was going to steal it. But actually, he was doing a signing event at the hotel, like across the street. My friends and I rushed over, and the security guard blocked us. He's like, "Oh, the, the no, signing's you over." You should have used stealth. Yeah, yeah I should have just see you see him. But like, he's, he blocked us out. But then Hideo saw us at the door because there's no one in there. He was about to leave, and he just he just did this, oh, oh. Oh. and he let us come in. And so uh, he was a very sweet man. He didn't say anything. He just signed it and nodded at me. I was like, okay. Um, and then last but not least, I got my Wii games down there oh, and GameCube. They're down there. Wii Fit? How much weight did you lose with Wii Fit? You're a very you know, um, thin and trim boy. Is it you? Secret to being this <laughs> is Wii Fit. Oh, damn. Um, oh, oh, we'll do it before and after. I'll stick that in. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send you a photo. Right, and then these are your game systems. You got my setups. Do you even yeah. have any PlayStation 1 games? I do, but they're in uh, they're in a binder somewhere. Okay, no, I I, have, I made the same mistake. We'll talk about yeah. that. You got Xbox N64, PS4, PS3, and Slim. Yeah, and then the Xbox Slim. One. Where's your PS2? PS2 is actually, it's over, oh, here it is. Oh, that's a good place you want to play. <laughs> yeah, I, hey, why would I play my PS2? Very cool. You got a lot of PS3 games, I love the PS3. I gave your collection, uh, well, zero Glovers out of one, but, you know. I mean, I tried. You can always fix it. I can always eBay a Glover. All right, well, very cool, Bruce. Collection's hot, collection's fire. There's no old or retro stuff except some N64. Yeah, I'm not, like, again, since I didn't grow up during that time, old and retro to me is Xbox Hell, and PS2. Oh, which is weird, I know, but that's why I don't Hell, have a lot. Are you 12, Holy? I'm 22. Oh, okay. Hey, man, the, the OG Xbox came out with in 2002, 2003, and that was my first console. I was a weird kid. I well, got how it. old were you when you got your first Xbox? I was in second grade. Okay. Oh jeez. Which is wow. I feel like that's like normal for like a first console. I don't think I don't think that's too late. All my all of my friends had PS2s, but my dad read graphics ratings on the Xbox and he says Blinks the Time Sweeper is supposed to be the best graphics of the year. Oh, was that your first game? Yeah, so he bought me Blinks. All right. We'll sit down, we'll talk about it. Thank you. Yeah. Let's do it. Hey Matthew, thank you for joining I, me. We what? can't we can't sit like this. We guys All right. Face all right. forward. We'll talk like this. Welcome. The podcast portion of this of this documentary series has begun. First guest is Matthew Bruce. We have analyzed his video game collection. You just saw it. There's no Glover. I looked everywhere. That's true. So, I originally pitched you the idea for the show a year ago. Originally, it was going to be sketch. Then it morphed into documentary. And now I'm doing the laziest option possible. It's a podcast. I'm mm-hmm. sitting the camera down, and we're going to talk with my friends one-on-one. I picked you because... 
more than anything else, I have probably kept in conversation with you about video games more than anything else so I could borrow your video games. You, you have borrowed a lot of these video games. Um, we, we met you in high school. Actually, I think I had already graduated at that point. I saw you in high school because you were just popular in high school. Yeah, so I was, I was very, like, see, I, let the record yeah. state. I was he very was, popular. Frank was popular. I was fat, but very popular. Because <laughs> I was like a freshman and you were a senior? Yes. So you graduated immediately, but then just because you knew a lot of people, I just started hanging out with you like a year later. Yeah, the legend carried through. Yeah. And like, yeah, because one of our mutual friends, Matt Adams, I used to make, we would make videos together. Uh, but he didn't play video games at all. But you were the nerd. I was that the sniffed nerd. you out. Mm -hmm. uh, we started talking about video games and shit. And then you had a massive PS3 collection, and I would, we would just go like we would we would hang out and film videos together. And I would just look at your collection and be like, oh hey Bruce, can I borrow this game? Can I borrow Infamous? Blah blah. Um, because back at the time, I through the PS3 360 generation, I mostly used GameFly, and I would just like rent games, beat them, send it back. It wasn't until kind of after college did I start having more disposable income did I really start buying and building up my game collection so for a period of time I stopped using Gamefly and just started using yeah. Bruce to borrow games I think at the most you borrowed four games yeah, oh yeah time. it's like a library I yeah, like you it. just like but you were no you were really good about it because you would borrow them and then like a week or two weeks later like oh here's the game no back. I it was very quick I the way I treat video games I have light OCD I treat video games kind of like movies whereas I wouldn't start watching a movie pause it and then start watching another movie so much like video games, I start playing a game, and then that week, that is all I'm doing. I'm just playing through that game. So I'd, when anytime I'd want to borrow a game, i make a sharp commitment. It's like, yo, I'm going to borrow Wolfenstein New Order. You'll have it back, you know, within five days. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was a long-time user of Blockbuster, so I treated you like yeah, Blockbuster. Yeah, because I've had some bad experiences with borrowing games. In high school, specifically, I let my friend borrow Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, and he borrowed it for roughly, like, over a year. And I, it got to the point where I was not even really friends with it anymore. <laughs> and I was like, hey, can I get my copy of Metal Gear back? He's like, what? I'm like, Metal Gear Solid 3, I let you borrow it like a long time ago. It's like one of my favorite games. Can I have it back? Oh, that's, what are you talking about? That's mine. I let you borrow it. I was like, <laughs> I was like no, no. I. But long story short, it's like, he thought it was his. He kept it. And I had to go out and I bought a new copy. Wow. Well, I mean, that's pretty myself. much the story of Metal Gear Solid 3, right? You know, they yeah. originally send Big Boss, they send, you know, mm -hmm. Boss out. She deflects. She keeps the warheads, yeah. you know. So. It was, it was very, Maybe, yeah. Yeah. you know, he got, he got suckered. Uh, I had the same experience. I had a childhood friend. I bought Grand Theft Auto Vice City, played it nonstop for two weeks, brought it over to a friend's house. Dude, check out this game. And he was like, hey, can I borrow it? And, like, he was older than me, so I kind of, like, you know, looked up and wanted to be cool. Yeah, it's like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so dude, I was like, sure. okay, yeah, sure, borrow it. Um... Shortly after, maybe a month or two later, he was sent off to military school. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think I then I kind of stopped seeing him. He's, he got shipped off to military oh, really? school for a few years, uh, and so I just had to. Uh, so I didn't play Vice City again until it was ported to Xbox, where I bought Vice City again. But I guess the opposite side is we traded. I let him borrow Vice City, and he let me borrow his DVD copy of Austin Powers Gold. Oh, Member. you got It's a good trade. It's an even trade. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess... You it know, worked out. Yeah, both are very cinematic. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but Jesus. So, yeah, so now when I borrow games out, it's like select few trusted friends, Matthew Bruce. Um, that's it. I most... <laughs> I don't know. It's me. I feel like, again, all my friends now are adults who can, like, just buy games. We don't kind of live in that era of, like, borrowing games yeah. all the time. Well, me and you on PS3, especially when oh. I was in high school, your, your account was on my PS3 and yeah. my account was on yours, and we would take turns... Like buying games, you're like, oh, I'll, I'll buy Tokyo Jungle. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll buy Jet Set Radio. And then we would download them together. But then, like, once PS Plus started getting really good, like, <laughs> I have so many games yeah. on PS Plus I don't even play, so we kind of fell out of that. It's like, I already have too no, many it was, games. No, it was, like, I don't know if it was an exploit. I mean, I, think, I feel like Sony knew people were doing this, yeah. but it still kind of works today, only not as many people. But, yeah, so back when PS3 was out, uh, you could have game sharing of up to four friends well, that's not literally what it was. What it was is you could have your play PlayStation Network account on up to four PlayStations in case you were some, you know, wealthy yeah. billionaire with four PS PlayStations across his house. Um, you would so what so the idea behind it is oh if you buy a game digitally and you want to use it on your other PlayStation three yep. then you can download it there. Oh, you have a third PlayStation three at your office? Sure, you can download it again there. Whatever. No one did that genuinely instead no. it was people going on like message boards like something awful and stuff and being like hey four-way trade who wants to buy you know the new uncharted for only tw like 15 dollars yeah. a pop and so yeah bruce and i would do that with like cheaper digital games like or i would buy a game and then he would agree to download another one so our playstation accounts were on each other's consoles for like 
Yeah, two, three years. Yeah, two, three years. The whole generation. Yeah. yeah, and then Bruce changed his password. He, he, yeah, he kicked me out. Um, but yeah, I, I had gotten so many games, and I still have Resident Evil Four, the like HD remake, saved uh, on my PS3, which I haven't played yet. But that's technically under your license. I played that like ten times on PS3. Um, and yeah, now they have it on PlayStation Four and Xbox One, but it's only up to two consoles. So that kind of like shut it down a bit. People still can do it. But yeah, again, I'm at the point yeah. where if I want a game, I'll just buy it. I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Also, I have like maybe I have like maybe thirty games and no, like twenty, thirty games installed on my PS4 just from PS Plus, and I've played like four of them. Yeah, that's that's like it's that's like, the thing with this generation. Much. And you kind of talk about during game collect when you're talking about game collection is yeah. When I was a kid, I feel like I would only get a new game. Uh, my dad would buy me a new game birthdays, um, cr- you know, Christmas. And then every, like, good report card. So every three yeah. months. So I feel like every maybe every two to three months, I'd get a brand new game, and that was it. So for a year, I'd get maybe f- six games. And, th- and you would play the hell out of those games. Like, Tekken 3, I would spend f- six hours a day just in the practice room trying to memorize these ten-hit combos that I would never use on anybody no. else because I was just by myself. I didn't have any friends. Um, I would play... Just like you know, Super Mario sixty four, you would just play all these old games obsessively, learning every single little nook and cranny. And these games were a lot smaller back then. But like with the Tony Hawk series, I would get like every single gap. I would find every single glitch. You'd go on message boards, just trying to get the most value out of your game. Now, 10, 15 years later, there's with Xbox, whether PlayStation Plus games with gold. Every month, you get eight new games. Most are small indie game titles. Some are generally cool games, like Mercenary Kings. Like you know, We'll talk about them a bit later, yeah. like Rocket League. There are really great, awesome games that come out. A lot of them have multiplayer aspects. So that's eight free games every single month. Uh, then you have platforms like Steam, where there's summer sales, sales, where you can buy games for $2 each. You can buy Sega's whole collection for 20 bucks each during a sale. Humble Bundles, which for a dollar you can buy six games. Well, like even like PS3 games, Xbox 360 games, oh, yeah. are like... there's If you go to GameStop, they have a bin, hey, 10 and under. <laughs> the- and you just... Just grab a bunch. This, this is, yeah, them. this is what I did at uh, last tw- 2014 holiday. After Christmas, like two weeks after Christmas, I went to pretty much every GameStop like in my immediate area, like the five local GameStops, because that was the season where all these kids finally got PS4s and stuff. And so all these kids just blindly yep. sold away their collections, 360 PS3 game collections. So all GameStops were filled with good games, and GameStops at the point now where they're trying to get rid of all their old inventory. So all their PS3 and 360 games were marked down to like Start five cheap. bucks yeah. each. So I wheel all these GameStops, and I think I uh, I got like a thirty dollar gift GameStop gift card, and I bought like seven games with just that. All these old games I wanted to get, they're now kind of hard to find now. Yeah. But we're just GameStop was giving away. I bought Dead or Alive uh, Beach Extreme Volleyball for two dollars yeah, at GameStop. Yeah. Value. Uh, Alpha Protocol is like two bucks. Um, I've been meaning to pick that up. What's the game? And Anarchy Reigns is like th- all these cheap ass games at GameStop. But now I'm I'm going back to GameStop looking. It's hard to find. Like, yeah, it's, it's dry. It's kind of dried up. But wait till this holiday season, and then, you know, little Timmy and Billy will sell all their old games. But even PS4 games now are, like, 20 bucks. Yeah, so. like, Far Cry 4, 4 is 20 bucks. Watch Dogs is, like... <laughs> I bought Watch Dogs for 15 bucks off Amazon. Like, the order, I think, is, like, 20 bucks yeah. or 30 bucks now. Like, games don't hold their value. Yeah, because there's an oversaturation of video games in the marketplace. Again, with all these cheap, disposable digital titles, GameStop with having the used games is a game will come out for 60 bucks, and then a month, two months later, discount to 40, 30, 20, it drops. So now more than ever, you know, especially if you're working and you have extra income, you can buy, like, video games constantly. Yeah. And so that's what I do. Every, once a week, I'm probably buying a new game off Amazon or used games, whatever, through eBay and stuff or thrift stores, whatever. And so I just have a massive mountain of games that I hope to one day uh, defeat. But I'm the same way every paycheck. It's like, every <laughs> paycheck is like, well, I'll throw 10 bucks at a game. And, like, I'll just go on my Amazon wish list and be, like, I, just, I have, like, games saved. Like, for example, I have Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition on oh, my Amazon uh, wish list because I borrowed it from you, yeah. actually. And I liked it a lot, and I would just like to have my own copy. And it's like, well, might as well get the PS4 version. Yeah. And it's been on my wish list since it came out because I'm just waiting for it to drop in price. And right now it's at, like, 29 or 25 <laughs> But once it goes below 20 it's like, all right, I'm there. So I have, like, I'm always, like, maybe six months to a year behind on games unless it's something I really want. Because if you're just patient enough, wait six months and the game will be half price. Yeah, or even then, like, a recent example is Far Cry 4. I'm not a huge fan of Far Cry or any, like, Ubisoft games. But Far Cry 4 came out in March. It's not August, so five months later. I think oh, no, it came, out, it came out in November last year. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. So, like, less than a year. Already it's, like, 20 bucks on Amazon. But then they announced, like, oh, next week, whatever, the Ultimate DLC bundle will come out. So now, 
because of, again, with the changing market for these games are getting so expensive to produce that publishers have to force DLC. Yep. So a game will come out, and then six months later, the all-in-one ultimate DLC edition will come out. That's even cheaper than the base game. So that's kind of what you can also do that. Um, but yeah, even still, with all these games, we're all talking about buying new games, but there's still so many games. There's so many I games need to be. Like, I feel like I have a pretty good disposable income right now with my job, and I can just pick up games. But even then, like, I'm looking at like. For example, just next week, there's... Or, like, in these two weeks, Gears of War just came out. Yeah. And... Which, I, if you buy it, comes with Gears of War 2, 3, and Judgment, or whatever. Yeah, I think so you that's get those four games in, like, for November, bucks. when, the, when yeah. the backwards compatibility comes. But also, Until Dawn came out. That and looks then great. I want to play that really bad, but next week is Mega Solid 5 and Mad Max. And Mad Max is one of those games I'll probably wait till it's, like, mm-hmm. 20 bucks and pick it up, because it looks like a... Shadow of Mordor, like, AC clone. Yeah. But, like, all these games are coming out that you just don't have time to play. And it's, like, I'm I'm almost, like, really nostalgic for my past. Like, you were talking about going deep into games. Like, Resident Evil 4, Mega Solid 2, and Mega Solid 3 are probably my most played games ever. Oh, those are games you can play over and over because, again. Because, like, I had yeah. a PS2 with those three games for, like, a year, and that's it. <laughs> and so I just played them over and over and over and over and over. And I, I know them, like, the back of my hand. And, like, I... I'm so nostalgic for them because I wish I could do that nowadays. Like, it's very rare nowadays for me to even play a game twice. Yeah. like, as soon as I beat a game, it's like, oh, I have ten other games I haven't beaten The last game I played twice, like, Last of Us, I played... When it came out on PS3, beat it, loved it, Mm -hmm. played it a second time, you know, finding all the little secrets and everything. And then again, when it came out on PS4 Remastered, bought it. And so I played that game three times now. Outside of that, um... I, yeah, I, I think I, I, I think that I think that might be my last one too because I beat it once and then I beat it on Survivor, yeah. which was a great experience. But other than that, I can't think. I'm looking, I can't think of a game I beat again. Like for example, I just got the Halo Master Chief Collection, uh, which was great that I waited because everything works now. Yeah. Um, and I played through all I played through all four games like in a week. I just sat there and just <laughs> plowed through them with my with one of my roommates, and it was so much fun. And. I would love to, like, since I play them co-op, I kind of missed some of the story because I'm s- sitting looking at it split screen. And I would love to go back and play them single player yeah. again and experience it as myself. But I just don't have time to go back and play all of those yeah. four games again. But the benefit, though, of, you know, game collecting is the hypothetical idea that one day we will have free time yep. to sit and go back and play these games. Because I, I, again, I, I wish I had that more time to play play old games i'm constantly trying to find new games but yeah there's definitely games i have in my collection that like i bought played i'd sit there you know even with like trophies or achievements oh i'd love to sit and you know get yeah. all these trophies and achievements but thinking like you know in time it would take to get this one trophy 30 hours to play through the game again i could play three new games but you know i learned yeah by the time i was an adult i learned like save these games because five ten years from now you'll want to replay them yeah um not all of them but some just like how you'd want to rewatch a movie so I still have all these, so I'm starting to save these games now, and yeah, there's some that I will definitely want to go back and play. No, I learned my lesson, because I my first console was the original Xbox, which is weird, because not a lot of people have that as their first console. Yeah. And <laughs> I bought that, and uh, throughout, I got it when I was in second grade, and I had it till I was in eighth grade or seventh grade. And when I was in seventh and eighth grade, I was very seen emo slipknot shirts every day hell yeah Super, i'm still that way yeah i'm inside <laughs> i was metal and i thought video games were fucking stupid i was like man video games are for nerds they're lame and i had like maybe 30 35 xbox games just from like my parents and birthdays yeah. and stuff and at a garage sale i just sold it because as a kid money like 20 bucks yeah, is a no, lot of totally. money so i literally sold my xbox with all of its games for like 30 bucks <laughs> and it was you could i think at the time they were still selling for well over a hundred dollars yeah but i was dumb i was like hey here's 30 bucks and i regretted it ever since so now it's like yeah i just i never sell a game back what pains me i was the exact same way i think gamestop is the worst thing that ever happened to me because there's a gamestop two blocks from my house and so when that opened up because again i was going through the period where it's like i would get maybe six games a year there was blockbuster which again i I loved i'd rent like fighting games you know i you could never rent like a long you could never rent like zelda from blockbuster because it's like you could play five days, send it back. And I think I, I did that once, thinking, oh, I'll just I'll get my save again. I, like, you know, so I rented Ocarina of Time, played for a little bit, sent it back to Blockbuster, and then, like, a month later, I want to continue playing Zelda, <laughs> rented it. <laughs> oh, no, my save is gone. And then I quickly realized, like, oh, you know. But then sometimes you'd rent games from Blockbusters, and you'd have saves from people who beat the whole game. Mm-hmm. So you could just, like, have all the secrets and cheats unlocked. But anyways, game back to GameStop. Yeah, a GameStop opened up across the street of my house, and it was just all of a sudden this... 
And that was like right when 360 was coming out. And like, that was big back then. Yeah. You know, I'd have to wait till like Christmas or whatever. And it was like, oh, I want this now. So I sold off like so many games, PS2 games. I sold off like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, oh, which like no. for PS2 is rare as hell. Oh, All these games just like, oh, I'll, I'll trade in 20 games so I can buy Crazy Taxi new on yeah. PS2. Like just this dumb like child economy in my head. The worst thing is, and I, we totally got suckered, is I, there's a used game store, there's GameStop another place, but uh, this was like probably when like, yeah, PS2 was out and it was like, I had Super Nintendo growing up as a kid, which I loved. And like, oh, I want to play PS2. I don't I want these nice yeah. new graphics. I don't want Super Nintendo. So I took my Super Nintendo with like, God, 30 games maybe, including stuff like Mega Man X, you know, which Shit. is like rarest, like these no. generally good titles. And I sold it off and they're like, hey, I'd like to sell my Super Nintendo. He sees Super Nintendo, two controllers, 30 games. I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. Oh yeah. Oh no. Bam. Like, ah. And that guy was like oh, so fucking stoked. Because he saw a little yeah, kid. He Whereas was so if it was stoked. an adult, it would be like, okay. And again, this was an independent use store. So it wasn't like their computer saying this has to be this. It was just some guy saying like, uh, yeah, a hundred bucks. You know, yeah, when he, you're 12, a hundred dollars might as well right? be a million dollars. Oh, hey, yeah. So I probably bought Crazy Taxi on PS2 with that. Um, and then <laughs> It is funny how I sold my Xbox and now as an adult, I am buying those games I sold when I was 13. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's funny because I had Futurama on Xbox. Which, looking back, is not a good game, yeah. but I just have nostalgia for it because I played it when I was ten, yeah. and I really liked Futurama. And I was looking, I was like, I bet it's like two dollars. Mm -hmm. Who like who wants that game? <laughs> it's out of print. eBay copies for it are like forty bucks, thirty five bucks, and it's like fuck. I don't know when I'm gonna want to spend that much money on Futurama for Xbox. Yeah, cause like I, I I'm definitely doing that. It's like same thing. Yeah, when with GameFly, because I, I so much of the 360 PS2 generation was that, and yeah, when I had like more disposable income, I. I finally bought, like, Catherine, which I had rented. I, yeah. I started buying these games I wanted, you know, just to have in my collection again. And, yeah, I'm always on the hunt, you know? Like, places I go to look for games. Like, GameStop, the bargain bin, great. Um, ultimately, like, Amazon or eBay is pretty good because it's it's so competitive online yeah. that, like, Amazon, either new or used, is the ch ultimately pretty much the cheapest, like, unless you get lucky, which... Um, Salvation, there's... Where we live, like, near Mission Viejo, Southern Orange County... There's, like, Goodwill and Salvation Army, like, right next to each other. Goodwill is total... Like, I've never had any No, every time I go to Goodwill, they have, like, Madden on Xbox. <laughs> but like, if, if you... But even if it's just Madden on Xbox, you open it up, the disc is stolen. Oh, yeah, it's, it's just stolen. empty cases. But Salvation Army is, like... It's a, it's kind of, like, hidden. And so I went in there, like, a few months ago, and it, I don't know if someone had just dropped... Like, some mom just dropped it off. But, like, there was a whole stack of PS2 games and GameCube games. And, like, there were some... Good. Like there was Wave Race sixty four whatever there's whatever yeah. the what's, GameCube Wave Racer I bought I ultimately bought Animusha two for a dollar what what Salvation Army is this it's it's by this like the like chick, the like Mexican like club do you know what that is do you know in Mission Bay there's a, like a Mexican a, there's, club th th that that's, I don't mean that's not supposed to have any the place for all the Mexican names no it, it has like it's like Las Chicanas or something that's, <laughs> the, the name of it or La Cabana it, there, it's a name um it's like an eighteen and up. It's a, it's a, it's like a club. They serve alcohol at the dance club, but I think they let like sixteen year olds in there. So it's just a really like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no, plus or negative. I'm just saying it's a kind of a, move on it's kind of a weird place. But next to it is the Salvation Army, and there's yeah, there's like old ass TVs, used underwear, but then sometimes video games. They have like I, when I was there, they had Sega Genesis and a ton of G Genesis games in box, semi decent price. I wasn't interested, but yeah, I don't know Salvation Army. The point is... Yeah, lately, though, I've been going... You may get lucky, you may not. I've been going to Book Off. Book Off, yeah. And book Off is amazing. We, I will gladly... I, yo, I, 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 there's one sponsorship yo, I want. Book Off. Book Off. We will... I will pay to have this podcast translated so that we'll have Japanese subtitles, yeah. so... Because Book Off, if you guys don't know what Book Off is, it's, it's, a, it's a chain in California. I don't know how many other locations there are, but it's a Japanese used bookstore that also takes video games and movies, and the stores are split. Half yeah. the store is Japanese half the store is English and the prices are like they're reasonable it's not like stuff isn't dirt cheap but the but every they're, single game they take is in pristine quality they're like pretty competitive because to, I, inter to internet prices yeah so yeah because like they're very fair and reasonable I bought um like for example like uh sleeping dogs there on ps3 is like six dollars whereas like oh, GameStop or something is like 10 mm -hmm. and again it's in perfect condition yeah. but um, and like they're they're like um, they have a ton of original Xbox, ton of GameCube, <laughs> yeah. but though it's like hit and miss. It's like oh, they have Shrek the Third, whatever. Yeah. But like their actual new games, like um, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, 
I like Call of Duty still, but I didn't want to pay like 45. I didn't want to pay 60 for Call of Duty yet. And it was like, this was like in March. <laughs> and I was like, man, I just kind of want to play some Call of Duty. I went to book off. They were selling it for 30 bucks. And I was like, shit, well, I'll pay 30 bucks for yeah. it. And they were selling Alien Isolation for 25. So like they're like for games that aren't really selling super quickly, they're pretty competitive if you actually just want a new game. And it's cool because, like, I, I'll go there. I'll check in maybe once a month. And, like, because, yeah, there's books. They have, a you know, great section. Like, there's film, li- lots of film literature there. I bought Jackie Chan's biography, I Am Jackie Chan. Yep. I bought Tom Green's book there. Like, just random stuff there, but you can get for a dollar each. Go to the video game section. What did I buy there recently? Um, I bought Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure That's for a PS2 great game. for $5. It's a great game. Which on eBay goes for, like, 15 bucks. Um, I didn't buy it yet, but the San Diego book off... Uh, near Mira Mesa has Razor freestyle scooting on Dreamcast. I shouldn't have given. I'm sure by Dude, the next time I go, it's they'll be already gone. snatched. Um, I, I, I didn't want to get it because I played it on N64. And that game's awful, but still, it's a pristine. Co- it's just funny that I, I have. Yeah, but anyways, book off. Everything there is reasonably priced, but yeah, they re shrink wrap everything, and it's yeah, my it's favorite game store. Really well organized. Yeah. really clean. Staff it's, is polite. Yeah, it's, it's clean. It's great. You can buy synthesizers or guitars. Yeah, it's it's like a, yeah. it's a weird thrift store, but it's very good. So next, I want to ask you, and this will probably ask all my guests, is what have you been playing recently? Uh, recently, I've been playing like a kind of grab bag of games because I'm basically biding my time to MGS Five comes yeah. out next week. <laughs> and recently, I've been playing. Ever since it came out, I've been playing Rocket League like almost oh, yeah. every day. Again, one of the best like. Freely released PlayStation Plus Honestly, games. Honestly, my favorite games this year are Bloodborne <laughs> and Rocket League. I love those games. Rocket League, what I love about it, and I'm, I'm playing online with my friends, we'll sit in Skype and just yeah. play. Uh, Rocket League, to me, feels like an N64 game. Oh, it's so In the fun. sense that, like, the amount of, like, insanity, like, it's a very simple, stupid, silly idea. It's just soccer with cars. But playing it online with friends and, like, screaming, it reminds me of playing yeah. N64 games with friends, like, local co-op. It's one of those games that's so simple and pure <laughs> that you can just die, like like the problem with like fighting games or something. It's just like yeah, they're super competitive, but it takes a long time to get yeah. to that level. But with Rocket League, it's like such a pure idea that you can jump right into it and instantly. And because feel of like the, I feel invested. like the physics. I mean, the, it's whatever. Its physics system works, but like it's so chaotic yeah. that there's, there's no there's complete unpredictability when you play the game. It opens, you know, like, there's the ball in the center field, six cars, it's like Mad Max, just immediately storming yeah. towards it. You have no idea where the hell the ball's gonna go, and then it's just six cars chasing the ball over the map, like, it's just ridiculous. And then playing online with friends, my friend Spencer, we're just screaming yeah, and great. yelling. Uh, I I love it. I think, in terms of, like, free PlayStation Plus games, that came out of nowhere. It's one of the best, <laughs> or probably almost my favorite PlayStation Plus game. I think in terms of multiplayer for PlayStation Plus, that's my favorite. My favorite that I've... That, that's come out, I guess, recently that I can think of is Mercenary Kings was a day one PlayStation Plus games. I didn't, um, I didn't like that game. I, I loved Mercenary did, Kings. I did not like that game. Uh, <laughs> all the art is done by Paul Robertson. It's done, I think... Okay, Mercenary Kings, the art, fantastic. Yeah, music's great. S- music, fantastic. Concept, fantastic. Playing it, tedious <laughs> and frustrating. The bosses run away from you. <laughs> I didn't beat the first boss. I, I, I stopped. When I started to play Mercenary Kings, I thought it was going to be, like, very light, like, me- metal slug. Just like, it's oh, so let's, intense. let's run around and play. I start playing with my, with my girlfriend Josie, like, two players, let's have a co-op. We start playing, she immediately dies, loses her whole her life, and it's like, oh, this is more like Dark Souls in the sense where it's like, this is a hard-ass game. All the enemies respawn when you leave the screen. It's like, I... I just have to like <laughs> But I like grindy games like that. I love the constant like progression as you keep trying to get level over and over again. I think I was just, I said I just had free time that month. So yeah. I was open to it. The idea of like you keep trying to beat this level and as you're doing it, you're collecting supplies, you can build your weapons up and get stronger. I think there's like hundred and twenty missions. I listened to like two I listened to an audiobook while playing it. Like uh. it was just a nice game to chill out. Um it's built, I, I yeah. would not use the words chill out in Mercenary Kings. I'm just saying, I, I, I get... Well, again, your first system was Xbox. I'm used to... I, like, yeah. I, my first system was Super Nintendo, so I'm used to side-scrolling shooting games. Uh, I played a lot of Robocop 3 for Super Nintendo, so I'm very... Very... Very, very skilled. Yeah, very skilled at skill dodging bullets. You know? I don't know. I'm, I'm used to bullet hell games a little bit. Not that Mercenary Kings is bullet hell, but like it kind of... I don't know. It's very... Um, it's, I'll say it's very strict. Yeah. It's like, hey... You can't just run through the screen. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to be you kind of watch it. But yeah. I know I liked it. One game that is like way too strict for me that came out on Xbox's like Games with Gold program is called Volgar the Viking. Yeah, I I, I installed it on my Xbox and people said because I've I've played all the Dark Souls games yeah. and I've beaten all of them and I 
love them. I really like them. And uh, Vol- everyone said, hey, Vulgar the Vikings, the 2D Dark Souls. <laughs> and one, I think the art style is, like, ugly as hell. Whoa. No, keep going. There. I am. I am. I'm being honest yeah, yeah. about, like, I care a lot about aesthetic in games. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't play Dark Souls. The reason I didn't play Dark Souls for the longest time is because I hate knights and dragons, and I thought it looked ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but isn't, that, that, isn't that what Slipknot sings about? No, that's, that's no, like, Slipknot that's like Dragon about, Force. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dragon Force is okay, never mind, never mind. Dragon. Slipknot's about the real world. <laughs> Grand okay. Theft Auto? Yeah. What is Slipknot saying about? <laughs> See, uh, uh, they have great titles like People Equal Shit, The Heretic Anthem, um, I'll Slit Your Throat and Fuck the Wound. It's okay. my favorite lyric. Okay, but... What was I talking about? You're talking about Bloodborne, which I Blood- thought you know, Slipknot does was music I, for. Was I talking about Bloodborne? What was I talking right, about? I'm gonna, you're never back on this podcast again. You Vulgar the Viking. Prepared. I Vulgar the Viking was not fun to me. It was... I don't know. All right. I just, the terrible review, I'm going to delete that from your memory bank. Look in this, this is Men in Black. I'm going to click that and forgot all <laughs> The type of, of 2D side scrollers I like are like Rayman Origins. That's a good game. All right. Um, okay, so this this just became a lot better. Uh, Volgar the Viking. Again, I don't even love the game. Yes, I don't know why it's that offensive. But I will say this. Graphics are awesome. It's using gen- <laughs> It's using a gen- you know, that, like Genesis palette. I don't know. I, I think that uh, graphics are tight. Um... But yeah, the gameplay is, it's like Ghosts and Goblins or whatever, where it's like you have oh, yeah. to memorize where every single emula- enemy is, every single, like even way more, so- Mercenary Kings is very, it's open world, so it's like, it's, you know, it's way more forgiving. Uh, the Volgar the Viking, you have to memorize exactly where each enemy is, you have to, every single control has to be deliberate. So I spent maybe two hours on the, trying to beat the first level. Uh, same thing, I probably listened to, like, three, like, two podcasts while yeah. during it, like, it's very, like, oh, deliberate, but I was like, I want to try it out, because of all the praise, uh, and then I got to the second level, and, like, couldn't get past it, so I was like, alright, I'm done with it, I think it's a cool concept, there's definitely, again, people older than us, yeah. or even people younger who are just, like, again, I have, I have outside, I have other interests other than video games, so, like, as much as I want to spend, like, all my time playing video games, like, I don't have that much time anymore to master a game, but that, that game is definitely a throwback to, like, Super Nintendo, Genesis, like, our old arcade games where it's like, you know, spend time at this, you know, even like Donkey Kong, yeah. like memorize this, have fun with it. So I think it's cool that it was made. Yeah, um, I think games yeah. like that, games like that, Mercenary Kings and Dark Souls, I think it's cool they exist because to be fair, games have, are so easy nowadays. Yeah. It's very, like, I never stop playing a game besides the ones I just listed because it's too hard. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I didn't beat Alice Mouse Returns, but it wasn't because it was hard. I just yeah. kind of stopped playing it. Like, you used to stop playing games because they were just fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. That's what you used to do as a kid. But you just couldn't beat it. And now, like, I'm glad there's, like, yeah. a genre. I will know. I don't think I ever beat the first level of RoboCop 3 for Super Nintendo. You just, you were just saying. How hey, I play, hey, I still, that doesn't mean I didn't play it. I would play that every day, trying to beat the you first said, level. You hey, said, my skills at RoboCop, <laughs> hey, you never beat I, it. I guarantee I can get farther in RoboCop 3 than you can. I mean, I bet you could. You know, so don't, again, can, but hey. I don't know anymore because I sold Robocop 3 yeah. to that asshole at Games For You along with 30 games, other Super yeah, Nintendo game. games for $100. My Robocop 3 is gone. It's out there in the wild. I got Probably worth $1,000. I got good news for you. What? Games For You is closed. Yeah. So. I don't know why they would be closed that they're ripping people <laughs> off. Fuck. Oh. I liked Games For You because they sold me in high school when I wasn't mm. old enough to buy M games. They would sell them to me. Yeah, it's true. I did so. get Metal Gear Solid. Uh, I, I did get Metal Gear Solid from Games For You. Um, like, I think the day it came out. I remember buying it and, like... So, we'll get into that now. Metal Gear Solid, we're recording this a Tuesday, week. a week before it comes out. Um, I'm trying to, like, clear my schedule for Metal Gear 5 when it comes out. <sighs> I'm in the middle of Devil May Cry 4 for PS4, which okay, I like. It's, it's, it's good. Game, yeah. But yeah, it's short. And then once that's done, I'm gonna play Metal Gear Ground Zeroes. And I want to take my time with Ground Zeroes, because I know there's a lot of collectible stuff. But I'll play through that. I think I got, uh, all of the collect... The only thing I didn't collect in Ground Zeroes is, like, all these cassette tapes... But I got all the, like, the mini collectibles, and I beat... I got an S ranking on all of the missions. I think my total time was, like, five hours, six mm-hmm. hours. So even if you do everything, it's still a pretty short experience. Yeah. And then once... Yeah, so then once that's that, then I'm ready for Metal Gear Solid I'm so, I'm so excited. Now, I know, like... Again, I have huge respect for Hideo Kojima, because, like, in terms of video games, he is an auteur. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's very few, you know, game designers who are really, like, at their distinct stamp. There's also... Yeah, there's very few people in games that just have a vision yeah. and they let their vision take like the i game. would say like sweary 65 yeah, whatever's swear. that uh the the french dude who makes heavier <laughs> whatever yeah. his name is david cage yeah david cage i mean it's whatever uh, not that it's great maybe but him, suda 51 suda 51 uh hideki kamiya which yeah. like he like the story whatever but like the gameplay like that that whole platinum vibe like the kamiya oh, yeah, definitely great. but yeah i think but again above all 
there's Kojima and like Swery is the B movie version of Kojima. Yeah. But yeah, Hideo Kojima just like this. Every like I love the fact that like Metal Gear Five is gonna have like Take on Me and like all these like eighty songs just because like that's the music Kojima loves. And yeah, it's, like, it's also it's like it's you already know like. I'm gonna be like gunning down people while that music plays. And then he's gonna do some. <laughs> Take home, yeah. That's he's gonna great. do some like fucking artsy ass mm-hmm. shit, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, Kojima. That's that's the translation. In English translation is artsy ass shit. Um, I I'm looking forward to it. The story of the whole Metal Gear franchise is like, <laughs> it's so like I have beaten all of the Metal Gears numerous times. Actually, I beat Metal Gear One like one and a half times. Like Metal Gear Solid One. Mm-hmm. But I, other than that, I've played every Metal Gear game at least six or six between six and ten times. I so those, those are just games that I'll just burn through because I just love playing them so much. But even then, like I just recently watched a YouTube video that's like, hey, here's the Metal Gear oh, story. Oh yeah, today, today I tried. Today I, I read like a. There's, there's that's the thing. There's so yeah. many. And even that, it's like, like, hey, remember this character, this character, this character, this character did this backstab this guy. He's the triple agent. It's like even then, it's like so hard to follow and it's like <laughs> that's why i'm afraid because like i think Metal Gear solid 4 was the same way four and five i don't know about five yet, but i feel like with four is they were it was like closing everything together so it pulled everything yeah. out whereas Mel- i think Metal Gear solid 3 is the easiest one or, and Metal Gear solid 1 and 3 are so easy to play because it's like you don't really need to know anything else no, it just story, throws you in this individual thing the story ends yeah. and begins in those games. three is very singular i think that's i my, my favorite Metal Gear Solid is Metal Gear Solid 2. Like, I, I, I like, everything, story, setting, all that is my favorite. But I think for, like, a newcomer, I mean, you should play the games in order, but I think, like, universally, I think Metal Gear Solid 3 is probably the best one because it, it, it serves as a singular story. Uh, I I think it's more focused in, like, Metal Gear Solid 2. <laughs> like, yeah, like, my, like, my favorites flip between, like, 3 and 4 a lot. Oh, wow. Yeah, my favorites definitely, too. Like, I, I love the first three games. Again, but I, again, I think what it was is that PS2 era... PlayStation era only had one game, so I played it over and over yeah. again. But, uh, yeah, like, Metal Gear Solid 1, like, playing it at the time, because other than that, on PlayStation, I had, like, Blasto, like, Gex, no, like, I had, like, Tekken. You know, you didn't have these huge cinematic stories. It's weird to think about Metal Gear Solid 1. I played it way later, obviously. Mm-hmm. My first game, I played Metal Gear Solid 2 first, then 3, then 1, then 4. It was kind of out of order. Oh, man. Yeah. But, um, when you go back and play 3, I was like, even though I played it without the nostalgia, I was like, this is still, for PS1 games, still pretty impressive. This, even though the cutscenes are just blurs, it's like still I'm still getting into it. Yeah. But when you read about that game, it's like people were just jaw dropped just no, for like the text being on it. It it like, treated again. It's, it's, I think, I mean more so than like Last of Us thing, but like it, more so than the Last of Us. But it, it treated video games as this very like high level medium. Like yeah. it wasn't for kids. You know, it was just like Kojima like really treated the the medium seriously and L pushed it higher. And, like, you know, it opens with, like, you know, this, you know, the submarine going through, all with, yeah. like, opera playing and, like, the the, the, the voiceovers and everything. It's it's so deeply cinematic. And, again, there's these, like, grainy-ass polygons. But, like, the, the scene where, like, Sniper Wolf, you know, gets shot in Metal Gear 1. Yeah, and, like, it's great. And Otacon's just, like, crying over, like, it's... It attempted to do things that, like, especially when you go back and just play other PS1 <laughs> yeah. games, you quickly realize how ambitious that oh, game was. Oh, it's huge. And how successful it was. Like... People will crap on Metal Gear all the time because, like, oh, it's a cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. But it's like, it's trying so much. It's like it's trying to develop games into like yeah this higher level of play and watching. It's like and that's the thing too with with Metal because like especially early PlayStation era like FMBs, every games were starting to have cutscenes just to have cutscenes. Like yeah. let's show off how these graphics. But Kojima wasn't using cutscenes as a gimmick. He was using it to propel the story. He was using codec calls to propel everything. Serve everything in that game serves the story, and he was using all the tools at his disposal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When it's codec calls, like you're, just, it's just like you're reading. You know, it's like a, a radio play. The voice acting for the time. You know, like I it, put like I think about Hideo Kojima in the same light as I think about Satoshi Kon, mm-hmm. that where they take full advantage of the medium and use all the tools. Like Satoshi Kon makes anime that could not be a movie or yeah. could not be anything else. He makes anime purely for the art form. And I think Hideo Kojima is the same way. Like people said all the time, like, oh, there should be a Metal Gear movie. They're already Yeah, made. it's already, yeah. It's like, no, it's, it's like, it's it, their own it, it works the best as yeah. a video game. Like, cause yeah, you, you watch a Metal Gear movie. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, that's, that, you don't need that. And plus so much of those games, also story-wise and atmosphere-wise comes from just playing them mm-hmm. and stuff. Like some of the deeper story missions and all that just come from playing the game and experiencing the game and then you know further with Metal Gear Solid 2 like the graphics at the time like I remember getting the demo because oh, yeah. it came with Zone of Enders uh 
you could just sh like shoot a glass full of ice cubes, the ice would fall, the ice would melt. Like just these things that people didn't think of at the time. And Kojima was again pushing the PS2 to do it. Like the rain would fall on the camera, and then you know, seeing I, again, I, I haven't seen much media of five. I kind of want to go in blind, but like I'm excited again for like, and I haven't even played Ground Zeroes yet, but just further see all the like tricks and tools he does, especially since this is like his last Metal Gear to go out with it. Yeah, um, Ground Zeroes is, I have, I have very mixed feelings about Ground Zeroes, but then again, it's kind of hard to have a definitive feelings about because it purely is a demo. It's a tease. Like, hey, mm -hmm. this is what's kind of in store for yeah. five. And so it's kind of hard. Like there's things about Ground Zeroes I do not like and things about Ground Zeroes I like a lot. Um, and like, I have hopes. I have like certain things in my mind that I think will happen in Metal Gear Solid 5. But what I'm excited for, every Metal Gear game has not like necessarily a twist, but Hideo pulls some shit. Where he's <laughs> just like, you didn't expect this, this, or this. Yeah. And he pulls like kind of like a curtain over your eyes. And it's like, I'm excited for whatever like they have been hiding, like whatever like they have in store for us. And I really do hope there's like something in 5 that is just totally... Like, I have not been super surprised by a game in a really long time. And I hope there's something really surprising in it. What if instead of fighting a Metal Gear at the end of this, you fight Glover? That'd he be punched a giant ass glove hanging, you know? And he's, he can launch a nuke from like yeah. the hole and, you know. You know, hey, Kojima's leaving Konami or he's being fired. Whatever, I don't care. And there's no better time than to reboot Glover. <laughs> uh, yeah, he should do that. Leave, go to Epic Games, reboot Glover. Yeah, <laughs> Epic Games. Yeah. Well, yeah, what, what, what is his name? Freddy Blazinski? <laughs> <laughs> Freddy Blazinski. <laughs> What's the guy's name? Cliffy Blazinski. Well, he, he's not even there anymore. Tony Sopr <laughs> Cliffy <laughs> Soprano left Epic Games. Let's fill the genius of Cliffy. Let's fill that hole with, with Kojima. Glover. He'll show him up. Glover can hold chainsaw guns. Um, you know, that ends the E3 press conference next year. Yeah, Glover. Here's Glover. Glover, you heard it here first on Neighborhood Game Club. And they, you know, because it was called Glover 64, they just just called Glover PS4. <laughs> oh, whoa. Uh, are you sure you want to give that away? <laughs> Damn. <laughs>give them a quick rundown while you're looking at your phone no don't yes um instead of video games i also love fashion a lot i'm wearing hba right now i don't think i can pull off hba in all honesty i think i look like a poser in it but i, I like it what does hba stand for hood by hollywood Air. blockbuster uh, ally very cool um also love fashion i love anime i've been watching my love story it's very good um, i've been watching the original dragon ball I'm only 30 what? episodes in out of yeah. like 400, so I don't want to say anything. I, don't I mean, spoil. Dragon Ball and My Love Story right. are very similar. So, Neighborhood Game Club is a hybrid video, podcast, interview, discussion, show, series. Basically, I'm ripping off Mark Marin, and I'm going to be doing that, what he does, but with video games. Uh, and I'm also listening to Brady St. Ellis' podcast. I mean, they're probably listening, and yeah. they're probably pissed right they're now. Like, they're like, I'm going to do... Who, who's this Frank guy? They're gonna, He's ripping me they're off. They're going to upload a video called, Mark uh, called What The? And they're going to whip you off. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm checking my phone because I've set up an email address called neighborhoodgameclub at gmail.com. If you have questions, comments, desires, you want to support our remake of Glover PS4, send an email in with questions and we'll answer them. What's an email? I'm down we got one, one email. Let's see. Happy emailing from the Gmail team. Here's some tips to get the most out of Gmail. Bring your content. This that's, is just that's, that's not no. This is just a, this is just a, a fun. It's a funny joke. Whoever sent that in. That was Google. They're trying to help me out oh. and set my email account. Well, so we don't. It's the first episode. We don't have any emails. Uh, people, people don't even don't even use emails anymore. The, the, this he's a millennial. I'm I'm a Y two K. I'm a Y two K bug. That's I'm a Y two K bug. That's 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 my generation. No. You're a millennial. You kids, you don't use email. You use Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, Snapchat questions. Snapchat, <laughs> Snapchat, send a Snapchat to neighborhoodgameclub at gmail.com. Uh, they use Facebook, they use AIM. AIM, they use AIM, they use Yahoo they Messenger. They use Bonzi Bud, Buddy. Bonzi Bud. MySpace messaging. I don't know. I, that's what this show's about. I'm going to ask people. I'm going to check out their game collections. Do you have Glover? Do you use Snapchat, email, or MySpace? I do all of them. What's the, what's the third thing I should ask everybody? Third thing you should ask everyone... We said Glover. You said Snapchat. Yeah. Third thing you should ask them is, do they own Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand? Do you? Let's see. I do own Fifty Cent Blood on the Sand. What the fuck? What case is this? It's it's the GameStop case. Okay, he doesn't own a legit copy. This is a hey, GameStop it's, case. it's it's as legit as it can go. All right. Well, this was the first episode. It was an experiment. 
you know, give a vote a thumbs up. There's no other option. Do you want Matthew no. Bruce back on the show? I don't know if he pulled his weight. We'll see. Next week we're gonna have a different guest. I mean, Matthew Bruce May. A what are you saying? I'm you're saying I'm skinny. <laughs> I just said yeah. Thank you. I was just it's not much weight to pull because I'm you know very light and handsome. The legend of Frank Halley continues. This has been Neighborhood Game Club. Your back is what? Fuck. <laughs> we did it. That was the first hour of the Neighborhood Game Club. First discussion. I had a good time. Bruce showed me off his game collection. It was very hot. A lot of Xbox, PS3 games. I like that. Forgot to plug off uh, Bruce's social media stuff. I'll put links in the description below if you want to follow him. Also, be sure to follow me, Frank Howley, everywhere on the internet, Twitter, Tumblr, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, if you have questions for the show, email us at neighborhoodgameclub at gmail.com. And more importantly than that, if there's anything that we talked about in this episode, please sound off in the comments below. I read every single comment on my YouTube for good, or for better or for worse. And uh, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, I want to know if people are watching this. This is a new show. We'll see how it goes. Format might change. But I, like, uh, blah, 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 but I got a lot of fun stuff planned. So yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Talk big games. It'll be good. <laughs>